Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe, and share with your fellow Denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain based Brave Browser and BAT tokens, it makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I sincerely thank you very much. If you have not done so yet, pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the awesome new Currency Exchange Planner Companion, voted the number one exchange planner in the Dinar community for a reason. Both the links to the powerful secure blockchain Brave browser as well as the currency exchange planner are in the description box below this video. First article of interest for today, the 2020 budget will arrive in Parliament in two weeks. This is the most prominent thing it contains. The Parliamentary Finance Committee suggested, on Tuesday, the arrival of the 2020 budget in Parliament after two weeks noting that the most prominent thing in the draft budget is the addition of financial allocations to re-terminate their contracts in the popular crowd. Committee member Hainan Cato said, the country's draft federal budget law for 2020 will arrive in the parliament two weeks after the formation of the government of Prime Minister-designate Mohammed Tafika Lawi, noting that the deficit in the budget law can be addressed by high oil prices. And that the resigned Prime Minister, Adel Abdul Mahdi, should have sent the budget before submitting his resignation, so that we do not fall into the pain of the delay, which has seriously disrupted the projects. He added that, a law we has programs and priorities that differ from the directions of the caretaker government, not to mention the existence of many notes on the draft law, noting that, the ministries of finance and planning will set the broad lines of the budget before sending it to parliament for a vote. And he added, this year's budget will contain special financial allocations for emergencies and to face the threat of the coronavirus, explaining that it will focus on slow projects. al Qaeda denied, there is a deficiency in covering the salaries of employees, but the government may need to borrow internally from expenses and shares. A member of the Finance Committee warned that failure to vote on the new government will negatively affect the economic and financial situation especially the budget, as it will be dealt with according to the principle of 112th as it happened in the year 2014. Next article of interest, in order to continue to adopt the best electronic payment systems. The K company confirmed on Tuesday that it is continuing to modernize its systems in a way that contributes to the multiplicity of services to the public beneficiaries of the MasterKey International campaign. The company said in a statement to Shafak News, the holder of the electronic payment card MasterKey International gets ideal products that are almost not available in SOHA from the issued cards. She added that, this matter created great competition within the labor market, and led the company to adopt mechanisms to keep pace with the best electronic payment systems adopted globally as well as in line with the instructions of the Central Bank of Iraq aimed at converting from a cash to an electronic society. It is noteworthy that the holder of the MasterKey International Card has an opportunity to choose between the specified advances, the amounts of which ranges between 5 to 25 million Iraqi dinars, and new products are introduced in conjunction with the localization of the salaries of employees of the Ministry of Interior in Rafa Dane Bank the active partner of the global company for Smart Card. Next article of interest. The Government Curriculum Committee holds its first meeting. The Parliamentary Curriculum Study Committee, headed by the first Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Hassan al Kabi, held today, Tuesday, its first meeting to study the ministerial curriculum sent by the designated Prime Minister, Mohammed Tafiq Alawi and made several observations about the curriculum paragraphs. The media office of the first deputy speaker of the House of Representatives stated, in a statement seen by al Murbad, that the Committee for Studying the Government Curriculum held its first meeting headed by Hassan Karim al Kabi, the first deputy to the Speaker of the Parliament, to discuss the ministerial curriculum prepared by the government in charge and intended to give it confidence during an extraordinary session to be held by the Parliament. Next Thursday. Al-Kabi said, 
The importance of this curriculum comes from being the general framework for the work of the next government and prepared according to the foundations and priorities governed by the nature of the current stage and it is not considered a detailed approach to the work of the ministries that will be tasked with preparing a detailed curriculum for each of them as well as containing time schedules. He added, the curriculum included several axes related to preparing for the upcoming elections, the rule of law, state prestige and government reform, which is divided into several axes, mostly economic, relating to the lives of citizens, service sectors, infrastructure, and real economic development. The attendees expressed, according to the statement, important notes on the paragraphs of the curriculum sent by the Prime Minister designate, proposing to add one of the deputies and political and financial advisors to the Council to its membership and according to jurisdiction. The House of Representatives has formed a parliamentary committee headed by the first Vice President of the House of Representatives in membership of each of the deputies Mohammed al Sudani and Vian Sabri, and advisors in the House of Representatives, to study the government curriculum before it is presented for voting during the session of granting confidence next Thursday. Next article of interest. A digital, Fed coin, may be coming. And it would be terrifying. Cryptocurrencies are based on blockchain technology that allows for decentralized peer-to-peer transactions to take place outside the government-controlled banking system. Backers of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin tout their privacy advantages and resistance to inflation due to their strictly limited quantities. But what if this free market innovation were co-opted to achieve opposite ends? Centralized tracking of every transaction with no possibility of escaping digital devaluations. That's what some central bankers are ultimately aiming for by replacing paper cash with their own digitized, monopolized currencies. Federal Reserve officials are eager to follow China's authoritarian lead. Not surprisingly. Authoritarian regimes such as Venezuela and China are leading the way in rolling out their own cryptocurrencies. But the U.S. may not be far behind. Consider what Federal Reserve Governor Leal Brainerd said at a recent conference hosted by Stanford University. By transforming payments, digitalization has the potential to deliver greater value and convenience at lower cost. These are selling points for Bitcoin. But Brainerd clearly isn't a fan of this and other cryptos gaining wider use in the free market. Some of the new players are outside the financial system's regulatory guardrails, and their new currencies could pose challenges in areas such as illicit finance, privacy, financial stability and monetary policy transmission, she said. Her solution. Centralization. Brainerd noted that the Federal Reserve is conducting research and experimentation related to distributed ledger technologies and their potential use case for digital currencies, including the potential for a CBDC, central bank digital currency. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell has also taken a keen interest in the concept of central bank digital currency, i.e., Fedcoin. During testimony before Congress earlier this month, Powell noted that every major central bank is currently taking a deep look at cryptocurrencies, adding, I think it's very much incumbent on us and other central banks to understand the costs and benefits and trade-offs associated with a possible digital currency. Having a single government currency at the heart of the financial system is something that has served us well. It's a very, very basic thing, it really hasn't been in question, and I think before we move away from that, we should really understand what we are doing. Preserving the centrality of a central, widely accepted currency that is accepted and trusted is an enormously important thing. Venezuela issued a digital currency called the Petro in early 2018, primarily as a way of getting around U.S. sanctions. It is purportedly backed one for one by barrels of oil. But the Petro also circulates at a fixed exchange rate with the Venezuelan Bolivar giving officials the ability to devalue it at will. The Venezuelan regime may ultimately seek to push its citizens out of physical Bolivars entirely and into digital Petros exclusively. The Petro makes it much easier to monitor transactions and punish those conducting transactions inconsistent with the prevailing government's objectives, 
explains William J. Luther of the American Institution for Economic Research. By requiring petro use, the Maduro regime tightens its grip on power. China's central bank, meanwhile, is actively pursuing digital currency as a way of enforcing its social credit score system on its populace. Even as Chinese authorities have banned most cryptocurrency mining and trading, they have invested heavily in centralized cryptocurrency infrastructure. China has reportedly filed 84 patents in pursuit of a new electronic currency payment system. How to break free from the brave new digital currency world. In the event that the decentralized cryptocurrency dream turns into a centralized Fed coin nightmare, what can individuals do to maintain some measure of financial privacy? Since all Bitcoin transactions are already recorded on a ledger, it would be technically feasible for the government to track them back to exchanges and demand they release user data. Worse, if all cryptocurrencies are someday banned, individuals would assume great legal risks by holding wealth in black market cryptos. Security risks and the proliferation of cryptocurrency scams are also threats to the financial privacy and security of crypto holders. Last week, a California man pleaded guilty to bilking nearly $150 million out of thousands of people worldwide through a digital currency scheme. The scheme centered around a phony digital currency called Gemcoin. It was pitched as being backed by precious gemstones. But the so-called gem coins were ultimately backed by nothing but fraudulent promises. Some digital coins claim to be backed by gold or silver. Even when they are legitimate, these types of vehicles should still be regarded as entailing many of the risks of cryptocurrencies in general. No digital instrument can replicate the properties of physical coins. Gold and silver coins, bars, and rounds you can actually hold in your hand carry no counterparty risk and no risk of being stolen through cyber attacks. Moreover, while the number of cryptocurrencies that could be launched into existence is unlimited, the amount of precious metal that can be mined from the earth is finite. Hard money may lack the convenience of digital currency when it comes to transferring funds over the internet. But most people who hold gold and silver coins do so for long-term offline wealth preservation and true independence from the financial system. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter for all of today's articles of interest. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner and check out the new Currency Exchange Planner companion before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities, along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold, by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Why do you think all the central banks are loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video. Go check them out. Knowledge is power. Using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Denarian.